guys, it's Queen DJ, and in today's video, I will be reacting right to episodes 4 and 5 of Descending Stories. Let's go ahead and get started with episode 4 in 3, 2, 1, go. Of course. Unlike you, Shin, you kind of look like a bum. Oh my god. Why don't you go get a job? Seriously? You're gonna give him money? Come on. Yeah. Always a liar. Yes! We don't need everybody knowing about what you're doing. Exactly. What are you doing? Have you gotten a job? What the fuck you got four DM bookings? Right? You did not really just say that, did you? Plus, it looks good to look professional. I'm just saying. Well, save up, duh. You can't always get something secondhand. Secondhand isn't always going to last for you. Trust me. 
Yes, getting something at Goodwill or anything is very good. You really, trust me. But then the biggest thing you're always going to wonder is how long it's truly going to last. You don't know how long that person washed everything for. Whether you go to Goodwill, Salvation Army, anywhere. Really? Uh -uh. I'm not going to say y you give me boys love vibes, but it still does. I, I don't care. I mean, four episodes in with these two. <laughs> oh my god
Clutch my pearls, Jesus. That's not even enough just to hurt somebody. Might as well talk about it. Of course, it shows in your work. Oh, he pawned it.
Right. <laughs> this wants to be independent. Oh, of course. It would be nice, but then at the same time, you're thinking of all the bills that you have to pay. Especially if you don't sell out on tickets. No. Uh. So the question is, are you going to meet her? Mm hmm
You treat her more like the way she wants to be treated, like an actual woman, rather than an object. See, it, it's building up that these two might end up having a budding romance, especially the fact is that their master introduced them to her. But something kind of tells me Shin and the way Shin is, Shin, Shin's going to come on his fucking high horse. <laughs> like, <laughs> why? But of course, she's, you can see she's obviously not into Shin. She's into Bond. Bond is the typical gentleman type character, while Shin is the type of guy who is the, uh, le mm, we can say playboy, alpha A type guy in ish, but sometimes even nice guys can be secretly like the alpha type or asshole. Like, but Bond isn't like that. Bond is just a, a man who is just like, hey, as much as I would like to fool around with you, I gotta go. And he's sweet. He would be the type of guy that you really would want to take home to meet your parents. Shit! <laughs> All I will say is that is a maybe. I think if you were, if you really truly loved him, and of course, someone did love him a lot. And I think it is her. Um, because she, he, since Bon is not really advancing on her, you know, situations and stuff eventually she's gonna move on i mean that's typically the things that most of us women do when someone does not respond to our advances we will move on to someone else who definitely will respond to what we, what we want and stuff whether that is something something sexual or not we will move on from someone but I feel like, as she stated, she's not really the type of woman who wants to always have um, a sexual encounter with a man almost every single night. I think she is the type of woman who really genuinely is out here looking for a relationship slash potential marriage. Now, is it going to last between this two, these two? Honestly, in my opinion, no. Genuinely, no. I think because Bond is so into what he wants to do and that his that is his passion and he's trying to do everything in his power um, to make that his full-time job as a career even though he is working somewhere else and such. He's doing everything in his power. Shin, <laughs> once again, I, I cannot believe this boy sold his ish off to get money to drink. I mean, damn. Like, okay. I, I've done some messed up things. I've never done something like that. But I've done some things um, in order to buy something that I really want and such. Which is still through my own money. But it's always about managing your money and, and such. And so Shin kind of reminds me of people who I've known. A little bit of myself where it, it seems like... Um, 
And I don't have this mentality, but I know people who do have this mentality. The quote-unquote hustler mentality where it, it's that point like, yes, he still loves doing what he does, but at the same time, he's only doing it to get a quick buck, to get money, so that he can go out and go drinking and then spend all of that money and then do it all over again. It's like a cycle from him. For him but when he is really truly dedicated and wanting to do something for himself and bond that's when he's like okay let me stop drinking let me stop this for a little bit let me get on my high horse and start that traction of oh him wanting to buy a small or rent out a small area for the both of them is his goal so he's gonna try to do everything if he gets four or five bookings in a week to him he's like that's chump change but that is also to my big main goal over here and stuff like it's on the horizon I am so close to it but I still have to do this in order to get it there you have two different men in in a way trying to figure out what they are how you know they are supposed to live in this world at this time and moment just as much as the rest of us are everyday lives when we're going to work or we're you know at home working from home or whatever we're all trying to do something to not gain the quick the quick buck but to earn money so that we can spend the money on whatever as much as I hate spending money every single day I really truly do because I am either paying my phone bill my uh subscription bills uh spending money on like anything like okay of course like I want to buy a game and I don't think I can buy the game, so I have to kind of wait like a week or two or three and such. And at the same time, I'm trying to avoid spoilers of said game. But it, sometimes it just happens. You just get spoiled. But, um, I, I mean, there's just one video that I'm kind of watching now. It's like the first 75 minutes of the game. And so it's specifically like chapter one. Okay, of course the prologue, duh. And then maybe like a hint of chapter, um, no, chapter zero and then like the, the hint of chapter one maybe. I'm not sure. I have to, you know, of course find out after I'm done recording this and such. But yeah, I genuinely think whatever these two decide to do in this next episode, something is going to be up. Now, with Homegirl trying to be a geisha and stuff, I feel like that that's also going to come back on her I don't know how but of course we gotta wait and see but go ahead and pause the video and I will see you guys in one second for episode five alrighty episode five in three two one go I would have laughed. <laughs>
And that's why I hate guys like him. Not all guys are like that, but ugh. It's not fair. You barely do anything and you get more work than him. Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. You're just, you know, psyching yourself out. <laughs> oh. Make you look real pretty. Yes, but... Give me a thing. Yeah. This is a sweet boy. Oh my god, what the hell happened to your hair?
<laughs> Almost. Beautiful. You got this. No, Bon, no, you got this. And even if you mess up, you keep going. You don't stop. You got this! Because you're beautiful. Love you.
owning the scene like ever since he walked on stage and that uh See, and he thought he was going to screw up and mess up. You did good. You were perfect. Excuse me. Hmm. Yeah. Fine. <laughs> that was a good episode. And I get it, like, truly, Baby was like, I don't know if I can do this. He's practiced oh so much, unlike Shin, who was like, you know what, fuck it, I'm just gonna wing it. <laughs> but he owned the whole play. He had everybody eating out of the palm of his hand. And you thinking that you can't do Rokuro. You can, truly, even with Mio over here, like literally encouraging you, but also taking you to her house when she's not supposed to and such, because of course they can't find out about him and her and situations like that because, and I, good. But I, I loved it, it was so good. He owned everything, I'm really proud of him. But this is now a step in the right direction for him. He needed an episode like this truly to stop having all these inner, like, demons and anger that he has and upset and being hard of himself and truly knowing that seeing that whole audience is really with him in that moment and paying attention to him in the whole scene and all of it. Damn, I mean, if they if they wanted to really do an article on this in this next episode, he would be the talk of the town and everybody would know his name instantly. And it's working in his favor, like truly. Damn, this was a good episode. And I also feel like we are getting closer and closer to Shin's death because we know it, it's coming. We can't avoid this situation. So we're about to go into six and seven next week. So I feel like because the first series is like 20, 12, no, overall it's 24 episodes. So we're, by next week, we'll be at the halfway point. So at least Shin's got to die before the end of season one going on to season two and such because then we're going to go back to present day where Bon is an old man and training the two that he was training in episode one plus also um, Shin's dad. I mean, no, not Shin's dad. Wrong person. Shin's daughter. That's what I meant. But who really knows how that's going to go? Um, 
especially with how they ended it with them and then immediately went into the backstory on Shin and Bon. I mean, still, if it was my opinion, I would have rather had to seen the situation of Bon and Shin from the get-go going into episode one and then season two or the last couple of episodes of season one would have been dude who got out of jail, then meeting Master Bon, asking him to be his apprentice and such, and then seeing Shin's daughter and learning about them more precisely in season two because it feels like when we get to season two, we're going to go back and forth between this now because season one to me as of right now feels really more about Bon and Shin's backstory up until Shin's demise. And then season two will continue all of that back into the modern day up until Bon officially dies. Because I, as much as I feel like Bon is probably not going to die by the end of season two, something kind of tells me that, especially with what all had happened in the first hour of episode one, he is tragically going to die. He already knows that he's on the last, like, years of his life. And he knows he is going to eventually pass away so of course he's taking the next apprentices on and saying in his way you two might be my last one so I got to give you everything that I have in this short time span that I have until my life is officially over and then after that you two will go on as my apprentices as my protégés and go out into the world and take the talents that you've learned from me and take it on your own. But, of course, we gotta wait and see. But other than that, guys, that is my reaction to towards episodes 4 and 5 of Descending Stories. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Master Squad. And, of course, I will see you guys officially all next Saturday for Patreons. And next Wednesday for everyone else for episodes 6 and 7. But until then, I will see you guys all next time. Bye!